<sighs> Welcome to a very frustrating episode of Azales TV. Today in this series of what the hell am I even trying to do, we have part 16 of my wooden electromechanical clock build. If you want to find out what I'm doing with dust blink and light, then stick around. It's time for everyone's favourite segment, mailbag. Let's get into it. Right, so what do we have here? We've got, I forget how many I've ordered, some I'm gonna say, DS1302 real-time clock chips. We have a whole bunch of CR2032 battery holders for coin cell batteries. And we have these things. And these are 32.768 kilohertz clock crystals which will attach to the real-time clock and the coding within the real-time clock chip will give us our once a minute signal to the Arduino now these things are crazy tiny I'm going to get one out and I'm going to zoom in real close and show you so two real-time clock chips I've got five coin cell battery holders and five clock crystals why so many when I need one of each? well, future projects I've got a big project planned for when I finish this clock. It's going to be even more Im impressive and complex and ridiculous, frankly. Let's show you these even more close up. Now this is my clock crystal. And this square is 10 millimeters on both sides. Now I have to work out how to solder this to my circuit. That's going to be fun. The first step is admitting you have a problem is making these breadboardable. Now what do I mean by that? Things like this, very easy to take out and that matches up with the 0.1 inch matrix that the circuit board uses and also breadboards. Things like this that have no leads, not so much. And this tiny clock crystal, even less so. So I need to line these up with these holes and solder the wires across so that these can be plugged into a breadboard so I can prototype the whole thing especially with this and it's quite important that the leads on this are quite close to this chip because they're prone to interference so let's get going with soldering stuff onto leads okay I've bent some pins over the end tabs of these battery holders and I've used this breadboard to sort of space everything so I've bent the pins with pliers press them into place and then soldered over the ends so that's done it's difficult getting it, getting it in and out of here because it's four pins and they're quite wide pins but there you go next up is going to be the crystal I'll see if I can get a nice tight zoom with the camera so you can see that being worked So a couple of days have passed since that last clip and as you can see I've been pretty busy. Now you know how it is when you're trying to automate something so it takes less time and it ends up taking days instead trying to do the automation. That's what this is but we'll come back to this. Right now we're just talking about this. This is our soldered together parts. So the clock crystal here, we've got the battery holder here with the terminals pushed down into the breadboard and of course our real time clock chip in there. Now if I plug in a Arduino in here. And hook these up. I can now write code to this. To store the time in this chip. And then keep it running. I can use that for driving a clock. So let's go find some code to program into this. Okay, this has been huge, huge stress. Trying to find code to run this real-time clock has been incredibly difficult. 
apparently I can get a library from here and basically a library means that it takes all the functionality of the chip codes it all for you and it puts it in the chip as a sort of hidden bit which you don't normally get to see when you're programming it it's like a sort of building block and you can use that in your program and the right functions for it but unfortunately it doesn't work I don't know if it's the Arduino version or the IDE version or anything else it doesn't seem to work so I've actually dig around and after much much searching I've found the long way round which is all the code without the library and even then I've had to change great bits of it to work for the Arduino I have in the IDE I have and this is the code basically I mean, I'll kind of quickly scroll through it I'm not going to point out any bits of it because it's incredibly complicated I've had to take out great bits of it to get it to work just the bare minimum I need to get a thing up and running I mean just having all of that I mean this uploads it and it prints it on a LCD screen and I don't have an LCD screen attached so I've had to recode it to work on the um, debug port and then once I've got the numbers out of that I was, I was able to change it and just have the bits of the code I needed to make it as small as possible so I'll show you what that's doing now so this is what I've managed to strip this code down to. I've set up the define pins for the real-time clock itself and one from the LED. And all of this is for getting it to run. This is for setting the real-time clock up. This bit here loops and it checks the real-time clock and it works out if one second has elapsed. It uses this little bit here which I'll come back to in a second and all of this down here is for writing and reading the code from the real time clock chip I actually thought I had it when I added the library first of all because it seemed to be working I set up the code and I was getting numbers and everything else off of the chip which is brilliant but it worked out it was a time library using the Arduino's own crystal for timekeeping which wasn't as accurate, anything near as accurate in fact, as the real-time clock. And my clue that it wasn't working on the real-time clock came when I unplugged all of these wires and it's still currently working. Whereas on this I can unplug these wires and it will stop. So what's going on here, I basically have this loop going around checking the time. Once a second it's pulsing this LED with this conditional statement here firing this module. I've got two variables, I've got the, well, two sets of variables, I've got the second value and a minute value. The minute value I'll, I'll use to drive the servos once a minute. At the moment I'm using the second value to pulse the LED once a second to check it's all working. It's checking the time, it's storing the time in the, in the variable um, down here and it's comparing what the time was to what the time is and if they are different you know, so a second has elapsed and it will run this function in this conditional statement to run this. And it's also printing what the time is in the debug port. So if I load up that, I just need to connect it. Uh, like that, and then, here we go. So I've got minutes here and seconds which tallies up with what I've got down here so I know the real time clock is working because I've had it unplugged and everything else since in fact if I unplug it now plug it back in again it carries on doing that and if I close this window here and then reload it so it reconnects I've got a seconds again so that works great so next job which will be next week now We'll be using the minute function to fire the servos and also be working on the servo smoothing of which I've got a couple of ideas for but I'll go into that in more detail next week because this week I've quite run out of time unfortunately because I've spent so much time trying to get this to work and it's been probably the most difficult part of the whole project so far I was trying to get a simple real time clock chip to work and I sort of re regret buying another one for another project but there you go so unfortunately that's all the time I have for this week. I've been so busy trying to get everything to work. I've just run out of time, which is ironic for a clock project. 
hopefully next week I'll have some more work in. I'll actually have servos connected and everything else. I'll, ha I'll have the servos running smoothly. I've got a couple of ideas. I might try and do a demonstration in the week as to why I can't use the, pu the pure sine waves to drive the servo arms. Um, once, I've, once I've done that, I'm going to try and port the code over to this, which I wanted to show you originally, which is trying to get the code from this to work on the bare chip, which is this one. Because these cost about £20, which is roughly the same amount of dollars ish. And this cost about two, so cost savings. I can use this again and again and again. I can use it to program that once and then use it in a clock forever and so on. But that'll be next week and the upcoming weeks. So until then, I'm afraid that's all I've got time for. If you want to see more, then get subscribed, hit that notification button so you know when I upload the video. Until then, Thanks ever so much for watching, leave a comment down below if you have any questions, share this around so I'll get more views and get more people interested in the projects and until then, take care, I'll see you next Tuesday.